high IQs tend to think that they're smart, which is, and that's right, and so then they tend to describe themselves as smart if you give them the opportunity to do that, and then that shows up when you ask them questions about their problem-solving ability, and that loads mostly on intellect. And so it isn't even obvious that there's any real utility in assessing intellect from the self-report perspective when you could replace that with an IQ test, because the IQ test is way more accurate. So, but that gives you some sense, you think about the whole five-factor model, you know where intelligence slots, it slots in underneath openness. Now, the openness, proper part of op openness to experience, which, which I tend to think about as creativity, it, it, you can use that at least as a shorthand to sort of aid your understanding in what it is. Creativity seems related to IQ in that more in, people with higher IQs are likely to be creative, or if you take people who are noted for their creativity, there's a high probability that they'll have a higher IQ. But there's more to it than IQ. Um, and and what, what creativity seems to be associated with, then again, depends on whether or not, on how you define creativity. Because you could define it as the sum total of creative achievements that you've made in your life, which would be the actual production of, say, artifacts of one form or another, performances or inventions or artworks or, or, or what have you. We'll go over the dimensions in a minute. In a minute. Or you could also define it as the proclivity to engage in creative thought. You can break creativity into two factors, more than two, but let's start with two. One is divergence of thinking, right? So creative people, well, one good example is like if you give people just a simple task, like let's say um, write down as many words as you can that begin with the letter S in three minutes. Generally speaking, the more extroverted, the more creative, and the more intelligent people are going to come up with more words. It's actually quite a powerful predictor of, of, of creativity. Um, if you ask people to do a divergent thinking test, like a Torrance creativity test, like uh, how many uses can you think of for a brick in three minutes? You score that by absolute number of responses, but then you also score it, you use multiple raters to do this, but you can do it very reliably, you score it by infrequency of response combined with uh, practical applicability. So, you know, it, it can't, like, you can't use a brick as a parachute unless you're trying to be funny, you know, which is also a creative response. But you want, for a creative response, you want a response that not very many other people have generated in the same, set, same amount of time, but that actually has practical utility. So it has to be novel and useful is roughly the, the criteria. And you can get a pretty good estimate of people's intrinsic creativity by doing a test like that or a sequence of tests like that. And I would say, okay, and that's separate from whether or not people have taken that ability and then translated it into actual creative products. So you can test creative thinking and you can test creative achievement. And they overlap, obviously, because the latter isn't really possible without the former, but the former is possible without the latter. I would say that I'm better suited to dealing with people who think creatively, a subset of whom would be also creative achievers. And the reason for that is because I'm interested in mythology and symbolism and dreams and all of that, that is a, that's the world within creative, that's the world that creative people inhabit. They often dream more, for example, and, and they're more interested in their dreams and they're interested in ideas, and they're interested in narrative and fiction and all of that, and so they, they're more naturally, uh, they, they have a more natural affiliation with me. Right. Now, I have clients, and have had many, that I would say were more conscientious and conservative and less creative, and with those people, I generally concentrate on pragmatic strategy, strategizing, which I also happen to like, but But it isn't necessarily self-evident, and I don't, I don't want to be overstating my qualifications here. I can deal with a fairly broad variety of people because I have a broad variety of approaches. Right. And behavioral approaches work very well for almost everyone because they're so practical. But then on top of that, there are people, particularly creative people, who need an additional level of interpretation because it's actually quite difficult to be creative because you keep transforming your identity and it's also very hard to monetize and so those people have a lot of opportunity in front of them but they also have a harder time settling into a to a mode of being which is why 
most people are essentially conservative, right? They develop one mode of being, and then they specialize in that, and it's a bit narrow, and it's rough on them if the environment around them transforms rapidly, because they also can't transform. But man, it's it's a lot simpler. And conservatives in general, who tend to be low in creativity, by the way, are also tend to be happier than than the more liberal investigative types. And and I think that's because their lives just aren't rife with as much complexity. Right, I'm going to ask you a question next. Uh, one more question about therapy. But since you mentioned creativity, I thought that you'd find the following study that we recently published uh, with two of my graduate students. Uh, hopefully interesting. So this was a study on cross-cultural differences in creativity. The idea being that is there something about the ethos of a culture that makes it simply more, uh, it's more permissible to think outside the box. And so as you were describing some of the, uh, you know, think of the words that start with S, it, it, it made me think back at the study. So what we did is we ran the study in Taiwan and in Canada, because one of the uh, co-authors is, was Taiwanese Canadian. And we, we administered two brainstorming tasks to the people, very much like the brick example that you described. One was, if you had a sixth thumb, what would you use it for? The other one was, if you were the tourism director of an underwater city, list ways by which you would try to get people to, to visit your underwater city. Uh, because these are sort of culturally neutral examples, right? You wouldn't expect that somebody from one culture to know more about those tasks than another. And uh, so what we did is we, we ran brainstorming sessions in groups of four, and what we were really trying to test was one cultural trait, individualism versus collectivism. Canadians tend to be more individualist, uh, Taiwanese tend to be more collectivist, and our thinking was that the very nature of the brainstorming task, the methodology of brainstorming, which is I want to be the guy who thinks outside the box, is something that is more consistent with the uh, individualist ethos, less so with the collectivist ethos, and that's exactly what we found, that the number of ideas that were generated, I think it was in a five-minute uh, session, were much greater in the, in the case of the individualist. But when it came to the quality of the ideas, as judged by independent raters who were naive to the hypotheses, then the collectivists actually scored higher. So they produced fewer ideas, but their ideas were of slightly better quality. So I think it really fits nicely with some of the stuff that you're talking about. Mm. Did you control for IQ by any chance? We did not. So, That's... so you're, you're, you're thinking all other things equal, my, the higher the IQ, the more ideas I generate. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. Like it's, it's a really good thing to, any, any cognitive task, it's 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 almost it's almost what would you call it mandatory I would say to test for IQ especially verbal IQ in relationship to creativity to to to, to now it may, it may not matter because the 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 IQ differences might have washed out across the groups but it's it's almost inevitably of great uh, what theoretical and practical interest to assess IQ if you do creativity exercises because it's a huge contributor.